Welcome fellow bookworms to Tibra's Den. My name is Whitney and today we have my February wrap up. So I had a very ambitious month in February um, and I ended up adding on some books. I had a bunch of rollovers and so I started off, I had 17 I think prompts from my game and then like I said I had rollovers and I added on a bunch of extras. I was on track to finish the books from my game and then our refrigerator died and I lost like five days um, just between dealing with that and autistic burnout and everything like that. So so yeah, I ended up not completing my TBR, um, but we'll go ahead and get into all that. And so I did something a little different this month. I was keeping track on a calendar what I was reading each day and then how many pages or how many audio hours I listened to. And I really, really enjoyed that. So I think I am going to do that going forward as well. Um, Cause yeah, just, I, I, I really enjoyed that. So we're going to kind of take a look at that. Um, I did, like I said, I kept track. So I started off with one of my rollovers and just read, you know, between 100 and 200 pages. Um, last day I read a little over 200. My best day, though, was on the 10th. And I read 501 pages. I read three different books. I finished up a book and then I read one whole book and then started another book. So that was the best day was on the 10th. I didn't have anything else going on. I literally just kind of sat and read. So that was a really good day. My worst day was on, I think, the 25th. And I only read 53 pages, and that was the day we had to go and get the refrigerator. And we ended up at the closest town to, or city to us. You could buy there, but you couldn't pick up there. And you had to go across state lines to the warehouse to pick up. So we were gone all day, and then we had to unload the fridge and get it all set up. Um, and so I read a little bit. We ate, like, really, really late, like 11 o'clock. Um, and so I ate and then read a little bit while I was letting food digest before we went to bed. So that's the only reason I read that day at all. Uh, so yeah, like I said, I only got 53 pages read that day. So that was definitely the worst day. But overall, I think average probably between two to 300, um, somewhere in that range was kind of my average. But pretty, pretty great all around, um, even though I did not complete everything I wanted to, I still read a lot of books. So we're going to go ahead and go through the prompts from the game and which books I picked for those, along with the extras, why I added them, and all the rollovers and such. And then we'll get into what I read and star rating and stats and everything like that. So first up, we got the character Piglet which is an auto by author or a reread. So I went with a reread for this one and I chose um, Daughter of No Worlds by Krissa Broadbent. This one I originally listened to on audio and absolutely loved it. And I am definitely not a big audio person. I don't retain as much listening to audio. And so I was really excited to be able to physically read this. And then I have the rest of the series that I can now continue on. So that was my choice for Piglet. Then we got Orange, which is a mystery or a thriller. And we pulled Little Mermaid, which is Deal with the Devil. And for that one, I chose Fatal Tide by Iris Johansson. Then we got Yellow, which is historical. And I got Pooh, which is red or yellow on the cover. So for this one, I chose Pieces of Sky by Kaki Warner. So there's that one. And then we got Green, which is fantasy. And for that, I got Pocahontas, which is, I got Peacemaker or Diplomat. So for this one, I chose Jade Fire Gold by June C.L. Tan. Then we got Red, which is a romance, and we got Aurora, which is Cursed or Bespelled. And for this, I chose a fantasy romance, and I went with Six Crimson Cranes by Elizabeth Lim. Um, and so that's what I went with for that one. Then we got another yellow, so again, historical, and we got Thumbelina, which is very small, less than 150 pages. So I chose West From Home Letters 
from Laura Ingalls Wilder. This is edited by Roger Leah McBride, and there's a historical setting by Margot Patterson Doss. This is only 124 pages with all the recipes and such that are in there, um, and so that worked for that prompt. Then we got another green, so another fantasy, and I got Jack and the Beanstalk, which was Bad Choices. And so for this, I chose Pestilence by Laura Thalassa, and really enjoyed that one, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Purple was the next one we landed on, which is any genre, and we got a bookworm, which was loved one picked, so my husband could pick any book. He was nice to me and picked Dry Water by Eric S. Nyland, uh, so there was that pick. Then we got another yellow, so another historical, and we got Rapunzel, Evil, evil Mother Figure. So this one's not quite historical, um, but my rules are if I can't fit the genre and the honey jar prompt, I go with the honey jar prompt. And so for this one, I chose Ray Bear by Jordan Fuego. Uh, so that was my choice there. Then we got, let's see here, Green, which another fantasy, and we got Big Bad Wolf. So that was a dog pick, and I had Ani choose, and she chose for me Belladonna by Adeline Grace. So we have that one. Then we got, let's see here, another yellow, so another historical, a lot of historical. And we got Kanga and Rue, so a close parent-child bond. And for this one, I chose Rainwater by Sandra Brown, which fit perfectly for that. Then we got Blue, which is a sci-fi, and we got Jack and the Beanstalk, so set in another world. And for this one, I chose Freedom's Landing by Anne McCaffrey. This is set on the world of botany, so that worked for that. And then we got a red, so romance, but it was a special square, so you moved Piglet, since I was playing Piglet, could go to yellow, so I moved Piglet, and, and it's a special square, I get any genre, and the it got a bookworm, and it was winter themed, so for that one, oops, I'm dropping stuff, I chose Barbarian Lover by Ruby Dixon. Then, let's see here, we got, a, we pulled a purple, couldn't move. Got a blue, and that was Kinga and Rue again, so a sci-fi, and it needed to be childhood, middle grade, or younger. And for this one, I chose the second in the Giver series by Lois Lowry, Gathering Blue. Not quite sci-fi, but the closest I was going to get, um, so that was my choice there. Then we got an orange, so mystery or thr thriller, and we got a bookworm with the earth element. For this, I chose The Tunnels by Michelle Gagnon, so that was my choice there. And then we have pulled a bunch of discs, we couldn't move, and we finally got a red, so romance, and we had poo. There's a rumbly in my tummy, so just kind of anything food-related. And for that one, I went with Sweet Revenge by Nora Roberts. I was going off the word sweet. Um, honey is sweet, and poo loves honey, so that's kind of what I made work for that. And then I had eight unusable discs, so I needed just something that represented the number eight. And for this, I chose Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen because it was um, originally published in the 1800s. So that was my choice there. Um, and let's see, and then I had my genre thon, and for that it was um, The Language of Love, Read a Poetry Collection, and I chose The Death of Sitting Bear by N. Scott Mamaday, so that was my choice there. Then we had my buddy read with B over at Mama Needs to Read Romance, which didn't get to be officially part of my TBR, so it was an extra, and we were reading the third book in the Friday Harbor series, Dream Lake by Lisa Kleypas. Then I'm participating in Autism Reads this year, which is put on by Christine over at An Autistic Reader, and so each month she's choosing a different book with Autism Rep, and for February it was Queens of Geek by Jen Wild, so there's that. I participated in the Battle of the boy bands and I was Team Hansen and the buddy read for Team Hansen was Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. So that got added on. And I'm also participating in Kim over at Expedition Through Pages, her Tales from Two Trails game. Um, it's very interactive and it's kind of us against her this round. And one of the prompts was to read a book from um, the country of Mauritania, and so I chose The Desert and the Drum by B Barek 
Old Beirut and translated by Rachel McGill. So that was my choice for that. Extras, I've been listening to an audiobook that's been an extra. And so I listened to Emily's Wild Encyclopedia of Fairies by Heather Fawcett. I also bought a physical copy because I just loved it so much. So that's why that's there. I had wanted to get to Lots Away if I had time. Um, because this is a book I'm really interested in. And unfortunately, I didn't have time for it. But I did want to mention that I... I had it tentatively on there if I could fit it in, which just didn't happen. So um, don't need to worry about that. And now I'm going to go through the rollovers. So there was five rollovers this month. So we had Crass by Marissa Meyer as a rollover. We had the book I'm reading with my husband, which is The Choice by Nora Roberts. We had book I started in December, <laughs> Little Women by Louisa May Alcott, and then we had two from January, um, The Sight by David Clement Davies, and we also had um, Invictus by Ryan Grodden, so those were, were the two that I had there. Um, that rolled over from January officially and Cress. And then the other two have been kind of from December. So that is all the books. I'm going to go ahead and show you which ones I did for Tales from Two Trails and Battle of the Boy Bands. So let me get that all organized and I'll be right back. All right. So for Tales from Two Trails, the first one was 40 by 40, which is Kim's goal. Um, and my goal is to read more classics. So for that prompt, I chose to do um, Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen, of course. And then we had the Expedition Through Pages prompt, which again, the country that was picked was Mauritania. So for that, I chose The Desert and the Drum by Mubarak Old Baroque. Um, and so that was my choice there for that. And I got that one. And then the third prompt was to read a nonfiction. So for that, I went with West from Home, Letters from Laura Ingalls Wilder. That was my pick for that. And then four was a buddy group read, a readathon, something like that, just reading a book with other people. And for that, I did my buddy read with B, um, Dream Lake by Lisa Kleypas. And then free choice, I chose Babel by R.F. Kwong because this round of Tales from Two Trails was from January 15th through February 25th. And I did finish Babel at the end of January. So I counted that as my free choice. And then the last prompt was Song Inspired, and she had pulled up Pushing Me Away by Linkin Park, and so I just went ahead and went with that one. And for that, I chose Ray Bearer by Jordan Fuego. I thought this fit the prompt perfectly, like you listen to the lyrics, and in this book, you know, she knows she shouldn't stay, but she does anyway, and so I thought that was really, really good. So that was Tales from Two Trails. And then as far as the um, Battle of the Boy Bands, which I'll leave all, leave all the hostess, all the channels I mentioned will be down in the description below. But there was four team leads because we had Team Backstreet Boys, Team Jonas Brothers, Team NSYNC, and Team Hanson. And so we had Rainy Blue Reads for Team Backstreet Boys. Um, I can't remember. We have Brittany Loves Reading, I think. Uh, I don't remember which team is either Jonas Brothers or NSYNC and Reading Whenever um, was the other one and then Team Hansen was Bond Book Reviews. So those channels will all be linked down below. But the rule was you had to complete at least three prompts for your own team and then you could steal points from the other team. So I was able to do that. So again for Team Hansen the buddy read was Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Love this. I actually watched the show um, last night so that was really really enjoyable. Then we had what the first prompt I fulfilled was Friends to Lovers, which for that one I went with uh, Barbarian Lover by Ruby Dixon. The two characters in this, so basically, in case you're not familiar, they're dropped on this ice planet. 
Um, they're basically alien trafficking and something happens to the ship. So the aliens that were trafficking them drop some on this ice planet and they meet this alien race. Um, and they have this symbiote that resonates to their mate. Some of the girls aren't able to resonate for a very specific reason, including this character. And so, um, they're kind of friends first before they decide to mate, <laughs> even though they don't have resonance. So there was that one. And then we had Southwest setting. And so for this one, um, I chose Pieces of Sky by Kaki Warner. This takes place in New Mexico. So that worked perfect for that one. Sorry, the cat's attacking my journal. Um, and then we have, let's see, oh, with transportation on the cover, which I chose Rainwater by Sandra Brown, because there is a vehicle driving up the road there. So that was my choice there. And then lastly, for Team Hansen, we had Highly Hiked, which I chose Belladonna by Adeline Grace. And so that was my choice there. Um, and so I read five books for my team, one of which was the Team Buddy Read. Then I stole three books from Team Backstreet Boys. So you had Romance from a New to You Author. I've never read Jane Austen, so I chose that, Pride and Prejudice, for that one. Um, and then outside of go-to genres, the whole point of my genre thon is to kind of push myself outside my comfort zone. And so The Death of Sitting Bear by N. Scott Mama Day worked for that. And then we had A Book of Friend Loves. And Sam over at Green Eggs and Sam loves this book. She's always talking about it. It's the reason I picked it up. And Daughter of No World by Carissa Broadbent. So that's a book she loves. And then let's see here. I chose, I stole two prompts from Jonas Brothers. So we had Enemies to Lovers. And for that one, I went with Pestilence by Laura Thalassa. And then we had Friends' Favorite Author. And so for that one, Bee's always talking about Lisa Kleypas. So I went with Dream Lake by Lisa Kleypas for that one. And then I stole one prompt from NSYNC. And for that, it was my favorite author. So I went with Nora Roberts' Sweet Revenge. So um, that is that for all of those. And so, yeah, now we'll go ahead and get into the star ratings um so give me a moment to kind of get them organized again all right so we did not have any one star so no dnfs this month which was great i did almost dnf the tunnels which is the bottom of the barrel for the two stars so we have the tunnels by michelle gagnon this one it was rough um, the writing wasn't very good, and honestly, the author, so basically what's happening is it's kind of a detective murder novel, and you have these girls who are being murdered and, like, strung up in a ritual manner in these tunnels, which are under this small college campus, um, small town college campus. And so you have FBI agent Kelly, and then her partner, and one of the daughter's dad has like private security like they're very rich and powerful men and they have private security and um he has an ex-fbi agent as his head security dude so he sends him in as well and the writing wasn't very good and the problem i had is obviously you have different suspects um it's kind of a mystery who done it she used mental illness and mental disorders as a reason why these potential suspects were violent. Like one person had schizophrenia, another was in a mental in institution, like a psychiatric institution. And it, this was published in 2007. Like I thought it was like maybe from the 90s or something, but 2007, like at that point in time, no. Like there's, I mean, there was no good reason to use it ever, but especially not. You know, that's not that long ago, 2007. So I was just, that really turned me off. The writing wasn't great. The whole thing, like, some of the crimes, like, didn't fit 
what was going on. Like, it kind of deviated. Like, they're supposed to be tracking the serial killer, and normally they have, like, kind of this set thing they do, and some of the crimes didn't fit that. Um, and the ending between the two characters, obviously there's a little bit of attraction there. Um, you know, it's not a romance book or anything, but there's a little bit of... And the way it ended with them was really weird. Like, I, it was just... I am not my favorite. So that one was bottom of the barrel as far as what I read. I had one more to start, and that was West from Home, Letters by Laura Ingalls Wilder. This one, it was just kind of boring, honestly. I mean, she's writing these letters back to Almanzo. This is when she's visiting her daughter in San Francisco. And she's writing these letters back to Almanzo. And there was a note like that, because at one point it's like private, like she sends a letter and then she sends an additional little piece that's just for Almanzo. And you don't really take note of that, but they were reading the letters aloud to like family members and friends. And so it was kind of just basic and boring. Um, I did like some of the historical aspects here, but it was a struggle to get through. Luckily it was so short, but yeah, that, that was that. Like just kind of bleh. Um, I thought it'd be a little bit more interesting, but it really, really wasn't. So there's that. So that's the two two stars. Then I had six three star reads, and we're kind of going from the bottom up. So we're building up to the one I enjoyed the most. So the bottom of the three stars is Pieces of Sky by Kaki Warner. I wanted to love this so much more than I did. There's just way too much going on in this book. So you have Jessica, she's from England, and something kind of happens at home in England with her sister and her sister's husband. And so she flees to America to try to find her brother, who was last in the New Mexico Territory. And along the way, she's in a stagecoat, and she meets Brady Wilkins, and he has a cattle ranch, but he also has this feud with this criminal um, who the ranch used to, the land used to belong to this criminal's family, um, and then Brady Wilkins' family got it, um, I don't remember the whole deal, but anyway, so there's that whole feud, there's the whole thing with Jessica going on, some of the side characters, there's things going on with them, so there was just a lot, and it was a lot of drama, and it didn't need to be so much. Like, I think if it had been tuned down a little bit, so I really liked the atmosphere and I did like the characters. Sometimes the characters were a little weird, like, especially Brady, like sometimes it, you never got a good sense of him. Um, but overall, like, I really liked the atmosphere and it was like the premise of it was good. She just tried to do too much with it. There was just too much drama. Um, but not, not terrible. I did enjoy it, but it is kind of the bottom of the barrel as far as my three stars go. Then we have Gathering Blue by Lois Lowry. I love The Giver. The Giver is one of my favorite books from my childhood. I've reread it multiple times. I still really enjoy it to this day. This one was a little bit of a letdown. One, like, as far as, like, its connection to The Giver, there's really not one. It's more of a companion novel. Um, the connection would be you kind of have this self-contained community uh, would be kind of the connection. But it's kind of very basic community, and everybody is out for themselves. And so you have Kira, and she ends up orphaned. At first, she had a twisted leg, so she is disabled, and so when her mom ends up dying, the other women want her plot of land. Um, they feel she has no value to the community, and they want that plot of land so they can put up a pen to pen their toddlers and chickens. So it ends up getting taken to the Council of Guardians, and they see value in Kira because she can, like, um, weave. And so she has value. There's a singer that sings the history each year and he wears a robe that needs to be repaired, which her mother used to do. And so now they're kind of transforming onto there. But as you go along, she's realizing like there's something more like they're not necessarily these guardians are not necessarily the good guys. And she's starting to question what's beyond the community because they say there's beast out there. It's really dangerous, but she's starting to question what's beyond and realizing like 
we don't have to live this way like everybody out for themselves like nobody caring about each other it doesn't have to be that way um and so the way this ended though just kind of leaves you hanging so i'm definitely gonna look and see hopefully the next one will kind of pick up and it doesn't just leave you like that um but yeah it was it was all right like i did again enjoy aspects of it i did really drew me in and it felt very atmospheric um, but the story overall was kind of lackluster, so there's that one. Then the next three star we have is Sweet Revenge. Now, Nora Roberts is my favorite author, and I did enjoy the writing. It was really easy to read. I enjoyed the characters and the overall story. In this one, you have Adrian, and she is the daughter of a Hollywood starlet and, um, a Bedouin sheik, and her mom... Basically, when she's eight years old, makes a daring escape, but because of the difference in culture and such, and she was just feeling very trapped, and like in this country, you can't leave the country unless you have written permission from a ma male member of your family and such. So she just kind of spirals downhill as far as her mental health, and she gets addicted to substances and alcohol and such, and it just spirals from there and so Adrian is now an adult later on in the book and she wants to take revenge on her father because she blames her father for her month mother's deterioration essentially um my problem with this book like I said I really like the writing I like the characters I like the setting is she kind of used the culture and the religion as part of why this man was so evil not just that the man was evil you know um and did these things to her mother, but that it was because of the culture and the religion. So I really didn't like that aspect of it. I don't know enough about the religion or the culture, um, but I did not like that. I think that's really distasteful. Now this was published in the eighties. So, um, there is, is that it's a little bit dated in that aspect, but yeah, that was just kind of distasteful, which is why it's only a three star. Otherwise it probably would have been a four star. Um, I did like though that like Princess Adrian, because she grew up until she was eight in this harem, like, she, and that culture and such, that she did have fond memories. Like, there was things that she liked. Like, she felt very safe in the harem, and so she did miss that and such. But, yeah, that was the problem, and it has, like, a thief aspect there, which she's done in many of her books, which is always fun. So, there is that one. Not bad, just a little bit distasteful. Then we have The Desert and the Drum by Mabarak. Old Beirut um, and translated by Rachel McGill. This one basically you have Rehana and something gets taken from her um, and so she kind of decides to take revenge on her tribe and she steals their sacred drum and then she goes on this journey to find what was taken from her. It was, it kind of flashes back between her time with the tribe and then her on this kind of quest and sometimes confusing in instances. And I will say like, you're really rooting for this character, right? And then the ending, like, again, just leaves you completely hanging. Like you get not, nothing. And I'm like, I've been pulling for this character this whole time, even though her journey seems impossible and you're just going to leave me hanging like that. Uh, and so that's really why it got dropped down. I mean, writing wise is very different. Um, and so I couldn't just like fully immerse myself in it, but it was enjoyable getting to see like different culture, different writing style and such. Um, but that ending, like, I'm like, you can't do that to me. So really, really disappointed with the ending, but yeah, there's that. Then we had Freedom's Landing by Anne McCaffrey, which is the first in the... It says Freedom series or Kateni series. In this series, you have this alien race, uh, the Kateni, who kind of like invade and take over other planets and other races and such. And so they take a bunch of people from Earth, which are called Terrans, over to the slave planet. Well, the Terrans are starting to cause, like, rebellions and uproars and such. Like, they're not being conquered so easily. And so they end up dropping a bunch of 
different alien races, but mostly Terrans on this new planet um, to see they, and this is how they, you know, planets where they're not sure of how they see if it's a hospitable planet or not. And so they drop these bunch of people, um, aliens and Terrans on this planet and see if they can survive essentially. So that's where we are at, at the first one. Now I read these books backwards. I read the fourth one first, then the third one. I haven't read the second one yet. Um, and now I'm finally reading this one. So I have kind of read it backwards, which I think kind of ruined my enjoyment of this one a little bit. Because one of the things I really enjoyed about the other two were Chris's, which she's the main um, female character. Her and Zanal, which is a Kateni that got dropped with everybody else because um, kind of a po politics and such. She, him and her... I love their banter and their relationship in the later books where obviously they're meeting for the first time in this first one. So that wasn't as good. And also Zanal's English in this one isn't as good, which so she purposely kind of mix up words and such because of that. But there were other points in the book where it wasn't Zanal speaking or it wasn't, you know, his dialogue, his narration where words were like all mixed up and it didn't get caught in editing. So that was really throwing me off. Um, but overall, I still really enjoyed the story, uh, and it did kind of get repetitive as far as, like, them going on expeditions to different parts of the planet to see what was what. It kind of got repetitive in that sense as well. Uh, so this one wasn't as enjoyable as the later ones, but I still did enjoy it overall. And then, lastly, as far as my three-star reads, we have The Death of Sitting Bear by N. Scott Mamaday. Again, this is a collection of poems. And, yeah, I'm not a big poetry reader, which is why it's only three stars, because I just don't get a lot out of poetry. But overall, I did enjoy this. You can see I marked, like, some of my favorites. So I have, I did mark a lot. Um, and I think this one was a good one to go with because it has a lot of nature aspects, um, Native American aspect, and then it also has some Russian aspects there as well, which I found pleasing. Um, but yeah, this one I marked, so the green ones are the ones that really stood out to me. And this first one I marked, I just wanted to share because I thought it was kind of an interesting question. It says, a witness to creation. And so the first part of it is, if you could have one day back, the one that you have kept secret in your soul, what day would it be? And so I thought that was really interesting. So if you have one day that you could revisit, uh, definitely let me know down in the comments below. I don't really know uh, what my one day would be. Like there's times with my mom that I would love to revisit, like if I could just revisit. And then like my husband and I's first date, I would love to revisit that. Um, so yeah, there's there's several i don't know how to choose one specific one though so that was the last of the three star so now we're on to four stars so kind of bottom of the barrel this would i think i only gave it a four star because i really liked the autism rep um and there was a lot of moments where i was like yes that's exactly especially as far as like the anxiety and such and just navigating through social situations like i really connected with that so i think that's what made it a four star for me the writing wasn't bad but it is they're 18 year olds so it is you know very young young adult and also it's like um it's called supercon which is basically comic con and so that's not really my thing either. So you, you have these young characters and then the whole convention thing is not for me. Um, so those aspects I didn't really connect with. And you're kind of going back and forth between two of the main characters. So you have Charlie and she's a blogger and an actress. And so this is her first time, you know, they're promoting her new movie. She had a breakup with her co-star that was very public. And so that's causing stress and then... There's kind of her love interest, which um, is, so it has the LGBTQ plus representation there. And then Taylor is the autistic character, and she's there with Charlie and then their other friend, Jamie. And Taylor and Jamie, you know, have feelings for each other, um, but they kind of are struggling to navigate that a little bit. Um, and yeah, like I said, I really, there was moments with Taylor and 
kind of her anxiety and such that I was like, yes. <laughs> so that's kind of why I ended up as four stars. And like I said, the writing was pretty enjoyable. So there was that. Then we have Barbarian Lover. Um, this one's probably out of the three Barbarian, Ice Planet Barbarian books I've read. This one's probably my favorite so far. So basically, like I said, you have these this group of women who are trafficked and then they get dropped on this ice planet and I just really liked you know her and I forget Kira Ihako Ihako um I really like their relationship uh like I said the other ones it's kind of like the the Kui is resonating um and that kind of gets like a little overwhelming I think like I don't know if I would like that um and so Kira in this one she like said she has a reason why she's not resonating and then she also has the translator in her ear and so she hears that these aliens are coming back searching for them um and she's worried about bringing these aliens to the caves where everybody else is um and so yeah I just really like their relationship and kind of their banter and such especially because they're not resonating so that's not like overpowering everything else uh and so I really like this one and I am excited to continue to read and there's kind of a cliffhanger too which I don't have the fourth book in the series so I think I'm gonna have to get it so I can figure out what happens with this next character that's going to be featured because it kind of leaves you hanging in this book so I will have to find that. My next four star was Rainwater by Sandra Brown and this actually has autism rep as well which I didn't know going in. It also deals with like prejudice and such as far as the people of color in this town and this one had a lot going on as well but it was done really well so it wasn't as overwhelming as some of the other ones and I really liked the writing so basically you have this mom and her son and her son's the autistic um character and she runs a boarding house it's in the middle of the drought so kind of the dust bowl in the 1930s and I meant to look up and I forgot but the government was buying the cattle from the ranchers and the ones that were fat enough and had enough meat they were taking to process and then send back out to the people that needed it and the other cattle that were just too skinny they were just shooting so the ranchers wouldn't have to feed them and such they bought them but they were shooting them um, and just killing them well there's a shanty town as well and so the shanty town people were trying to come in and get the meat off these cows since you know they were just gonna go to waste anyway and you kind of have this bully group who doesn't want that because they run like the main meat packing plant in the town um, and they're just kind of bullies anyway so they don't really even if they didn't have that they didn't care and they kind of have the police in their pocket um and so they're coming in and literally stopping people from taking the meat off these cows so you have that aspect you have mr rainwater who is a relation of the town doctor who comes and stays uh i think her name's stella ella sorry ella comes and stays at her boarding house he has something going on with him as well um, but he really connects with Ella's son and so that was really really cool and yeah I think all the pieces kind of fit together of what was going on in this town and it was just really really interesting and so I, I did really enjoy that um, and so that got four stars for me next up which I wish this was a five star I really do um, but we have Ray Bearer by Giorgio Fuego I loved almost everything about this book. There's just something about the writing that I didn't quite connect with, though. The story, the characters, the premise, like the plot, all that I really enjoyed, but there's just something about the writing that I didn't quite connect with, which is why it wasn't a full five stars. Um, but other than that, I love it. So you have Teresai, and she's raised um, kind of off isolated and she's her mother figure is only known as the lady um and then she gets sent off to um I'll just read kind of the thing so 
Teresa has always longed for the warmth of a family. She was raised in isolation by her mysterious, cunning, and often absent mother, known only as Lady. When Teresa comes of age, the Lady sends her to the capital of the global empire of Erisar to be chosen as one of the Crown Prince's Council of Eleven. If she's picked, she'll be joined with the other council members through the ray, a bond deeper than blood. But the lady has other ideas, including a magical wish that Teresai is compelled to obey, kill the crown prince once she gains his trust. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's kind of dealing with that. And so she gets sent, and she forms this bond with the prince. But there's also something deeper going on, like why the lady wants the prince killed and such. And like the whole magic system with the ray and the connection to the Council of Eleven and like the immunity to death and such. Like it's really, really cool. Like just, there was just something about the writing that didn't quite click for me. So that's why I only got a four star, but still four star is really good. Uh, and I am excited to read the second one, Redemptor, hopefully in April. So then we have Daisy Jones and the Six as my next four star read. This one, it was just so unique. It was so different from like the format and such from what I normally read because it's kind of interview style, but not just like you don't have like clips from one person. It's like little clips from different people on the same like time period or topic or whatever from the different people in the band it was just really cool and it just left me wanting more which i'm so glad the tv show although i do have some issues like they changed some things in the tv show that i don't agree with um but still it's really really cool you know and the whole time i was like i wish i could be listening to the music they're talking about uh, so yeah, this one definitely got a four star for me. It's not a five star for me because I don't see myself like running out to read other things by this author. If I come across it like in a thrift store, I'll definitely pick it up. But the writing wasn't like so good that I'm like, oh yeah, I'm going to try to get something else by this author to read. Um, but I did really, really enjoy this. So there's that one. And then my last four star is... <laughs> Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. I think the more I reread this, it's probably going to become a five star. The only reason it's not is because there's a lot of dialogue back and forth. Um, it's mostly dialogue. And I don't like that anyway, especially I struggle to understand, like, because it's a little bit different than how things are spoken today. And so it was kind of hard for me to follow along in some spots. That being said, like, I, the Kira Knightley movie, adaptation of this is one of my favorites like it's a comfort watch for me I've watched it so many times I know it pretty much by heart and so the scenes like I could okay this is this is happening you know this is what's going on in the movie compared to what's happening here like they were very close um there are some characters that didn't make it into the movie which makes sense like you didn't need those extra characters uh and, but yeah overall like I love, like I said, I love the story of it. It was just really hard. If I didn't have that intimate knowledge of the movie and that didn't help me get go along through the story, I would have struggled a lot more with this. But unfortunately, I did have that. And the movie does closely follow the book. Uh, it gets a little off towards the end. And, like, there's some scenes where it combines multiple scenes together. Um, but, yeah, overall, like, really, really good. It's just I did struggle on that dialogue back and forth constantly and struggling to follow along that's what dropped it down for me but like I said if I read it more and more and get more familiar with it it might go up to a five star because I absolutely love the story and I love Mr. Darcy so there's that so that was the last four star and now we're on to our five stars so kind of bottom of the barrel for five stars is Dream Lake by Lisa Kleypas now B only gave it four and a half stars um and if there wasn't a specific thing going on that I absolutely love and I also kind of have like personal reasons to connect to the book um it probably would have been a four star for me especially the main character story but in this one so the Friday Harbor series is basically following these three brothers there is a fourth book which the main character here Zoe is love interest of one of the brothers it's her cousin's story in the fourth book um so it kind of deviates from that but basically these three brothers all kind of have commitment issues um and their own kind of like demons from their childhood because their parents were alcoholics um and so it's you know obviously romance so their love stories um but and them kind of overcoming those commitment issues 
Alex himself is an alcoholic and he's in a very dark place. He's kind of spiraling. Um, and so his story arc is really, really good in this. Um, but like I said, him and Zoe, like I enjoyed them. I liked their story, but that's not what got me. There is a ghost in this one and kind of ties himself to Alex and so Alex is kind of having to help his ghost. The ghost doesn't know who he is, why he's there, or anything like that. And so Alex is trying to help him figure that out. And then you also have Zoe's grandmother who has dementia and she has had like strokes. Um, I forget what it's called, but basically the strokes are kind of causing the dementia. And so I kind of relate to that. You know, my grandparents are getting older now. My grandpa had a stroke. Um, a couple years ago, he's doing really great, but, you know, I can relate to that, like, the struggle when your grandparents are getting older and having health things and such. So that connected to me, and then the whole story with the ghost and the love story with the ghost, like, oh, I wanted more of that for sure, but I am a sucker for, like, kind of the one that got away, the, like, love into death, like, tropes like that, like, I am a sucker for that, so I absolutely ate that up, which is why it ended up a five star for me. So there's that. Then we had Six Crimson Cranes, which I've been wanting to read this book since it came out. Like <laughs> I've been so excited for it. Finally got it for Christmas along with the second one in the series. Um, and so yeah, basically you're following Shiori, and this is based on like an actual folk tale, and her brother's and her get cursed. So his brothers get turned into six crimson cranes, and then she's not allowed to speak or utter any noise, or one of her brothers will die. And then she also is wearing this bowl on her head, and nobody can recognize her, um, and she can't speak to tell people who she is. And so she's the daughter of a very important, you know, royal figure. Um, and so, yeah, it's her stepmother that curses them and banishes them. Um, and along the way, she has this dragon who's trying to help her. Um, and then there's also her betrothed, which is kind of her kind of betrothal ceremony. Um, she kind of skipped out on it, and that kind of leads to the events of her essentially getting cursed and whatnot. Um, and so, yeah, she's, you know, ends up with him, but she can't tell him who she is, um, and it's just, it's a good time, like, I really did enjoy this, um, and so, yeah, that's a, a, a five-star read for me. Then we have Belladonna and this one. These were really hard. I think from Six Crimson Cranes through the rest of them, I had a really hard time choosing what went where. Belladonna, I absolutely love. So in this one, you have Cigna, and ever since she was a baby, she's just kind of plagued by death. Like, people around her just keep dying. So she goes to kind of her final relatives, and the mom is has been poisoned and is dead and the daughter's really sick. Um, the dad just keeps throwing parties and trying to be cheerful and then the son's kind of just grumpy and angsty and such. So she's there and she's trying to figure out who poisoned the mom and like the mystery of it and along the way like she's getting help from death and there's also this stable boy and so there's a little bit of a love triangle and I was kind of getting frustrated with the love triangle a little bit but in the end like it works out it's like okay and part of the reason like I was frustrated like I didn't know who to root for um as far as the love triangle because I really liked the character of death and I really liked the stable boy as well so um but I did like how it played out in the end I just really really enjoyed this one overall uh, so like I said it was it was hard where to place it but because this is a little bit younger um that's why some of the others went a little bit higher then we have crest so obviously this is also younger as far as writing contests a little bit more way and this one though i like the uniqueness of the sci-fi combined with the fairy tales and so if you're not familiar with the lunar chronicles basically it's kind of fairy tale inspired but sci-fi and so in the first one you have cinder so cinderella um, based and she is a cyborg 
and then you have Prince Kai, and you also have the lunar people, and the queen, Queen Levina, is basically threatening war unless Prince Kai marries her. Um, and so it's kind of the journey it takes you through, and so the main focus is Cinder, and she's kind of going to be the hero of the stories, but throughout the rest of the series, so like the second one, you have Scarlet, so that's kind of more the focus, and how they're coming to, like, their story, and how they come to team up with Cinder, and then in this one, it's Cress, and yeah, I just, I really enjoyed this one, and you have Thorn, who's based on Rapunzel, I forget his name, um, but the guy from Rapunzel, and so him and Cress in this, like, I love their relationship in this, like, absolutely love it, and it's just kind of now their story, and how they're getting involved in this whole big plot line, um, and absolutely, absolutely love it. The only thing I will say, though, is I've noticed in these, like, the characters are keep getting separated, and that causes me a lot of anxiety, <laughs> like, I don't like in books when characters get separated, and they're trying to, like, find each other and come back together, like, it causes me a lot of anxiety, um, so I will just say that, but absolutely loving this, definitely gonna try to get winter on my April TBR, this one was rollover from January, and I actually had winter on my January TBR, I didn't roll it over, though, because d there's just no way in February, I was going to add an over 800 page book on there. So, but I did get this one read and loved it as always. So there's that. Then next, so this was kind of hard. And the only reason this one ended up third as far as my five star is because it's a little bit more involved and a little bit more in depth. So it takes a little bit more brain power and such to read. But I still absolutely love it. So Daughter of No Worlds by Carissa Broadbent. In this one, you have Tasana, and she is a slave. And when she goes by her freedom, um, the... She, the slaver turns on her essentially and so she has to escape and she goes to the orders and she's determined you know to become part of them and get help freeing the other slaves um and so she goes there and she gets paired up with max and tarius uh, or tarius and it's a very slow burn romance between them um and there's kind of the orders aren't as good as they are made out to be um, and he knows that, so he's very reluctant to work with her, but in the end, you know, he does, and then he tries to help her and warn her about the orders and things that they might offer her, because they're planning on using her, um, in the way that they used Max, so, yeah, just really, really, really good, and I cannot wait to continue on with the series. So there is that one in third place. Then we have Pestilence by Laura Thalassa. I love this. I knew I was going to love this series. I was a little worried about the dark romance aspect, but it really isn't bad at all. Um, and so in this one, you have Pestilence. So it's based, the series is the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse coming to end the world. And so in this one, you have Sarah, and she tries to kill Pestilence, but Pestilence can't die, and so he takes her captive, um, and along the way, you know, they, they kind of form this bond and start forming feelings for each other, and absolutely love this, like, it was so well done, very atmospheric, pulled me right along, and I cannot wait to read the next one in the series, so absolutely loved it. Then, lastly, top place, as far as enjoyment goes, we have Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies by Heather Fawcett. Again, I listened to this. I'm going to be reading it physically, hopefully in April. I just, this was just such a good time. It was funny. I found myself, like, I don't really talk about the books. Like, I read them and enjoy them and then talk about them here. But as far as, like, people in my everyday life, I don't talk about them a whole lot. This one, I was multiple times bringing it up because it was funny and I just was really really enjoying it um and so you have Emily and she's kind of an academic and so she's going to this um place to try to research these fairies that haven't been researched before she's doing an encyclopedia of fairies and so she wants to get them well the town's kind of being plagued by the fae um taking people and children and such so uh she kind of gets roped into helping the town and such and then you have the <laughs> Bramley 
and he's an Irish fairy um, who's been banished and he's helping her. Uh, and he, just their banter together is funny. Again, you kind of have that slow burn romance and I just, I, it was so enjoyable, so much fun. It was funny and I really enjoyed the audio narration as well. Um, and I'm really looking forward to reading it physically though. So that is it as far as star ratings. Um, and so the books I didn't get to on my official game TBR was Fatal Tide by Iris Johansson, which was uh, Deal with the Devil. And this one, I'm not going to be rolling over. It's going to go back on my shelf because I'm planning on reading my Irish Johansson books um, at some point anyway, like working my way through them because I built up that collection now. And so I'm not overly concerned that I'm not going to get to this one. So I'm just going to put it back for now. And then we have Jade Fire Gold, which was Pocahontas, um, uh, Peacemaker or Diplomat. I'm not rolling this one over either. This one I'm not as excited about. I did haul it from the thrift store and it does look interesting, but I'm not as excited about and I want to get my January rollovers I didn't get to done, so I'm not going to be rolling over this one either. Uh, and then we have Dry Water by Eric S. Nyland, which is the one my husband picked for me. So I did roll this over. I'm working on it right now. Um, I'm about 94 pages in. Um, I'm on part two finally. Uh, and I've been struggling with this, but my husband's like, keep pushing through because he won't do enough of books. So he pushed through. So he's like, keep pushing through. Uh, so I, I am. It's taken me like, I think we're on the fourth right now and I'm still working on it. <laughs> so um, granted, I haven't read a whole lot anyway, um, but it has been a struggle when I have tried to pick this up. Um, so yeah, that one is rolling over. It's going to be my mandatory rollover. So basically my punishment was originally just going to be to roll over the books I didn't get read. That's too much. So I just, my rule is my punishment. I have to roll over one book and I have to get it read before I can start on my next month's TBR. So that's that book. Uh, so I am working on that. So that's a rollover. I am going to continue to roll over um, the ones from January. So we have Invictus by Ryan Garadin. That's going to get rolled over. We have The Sight by David Clement Davies. That's going to get rolled over. We have Little Women, which was from <laughs> January or December. Uh, and I only read 100 pages and I haven't touched it since December. So I do want to finish that. I'm actually planning on picking this up right after Dry Water, getting it done. And then and I'll kind of alternate between the rollovers and my actual TBR for March. And then, of course, we have The Choice by Nora Roberts. I'm thinking, you know, in February I was bringing a lot of books to bed to continue to read because there were so many books to read. Where I won't have that in March, so I'm pretty sure me and my husband can get this read in March. So that's really over. I had also added on a lots of way if I could get to it in February. Clearly didn't happen. That one's not rolling over for March, but I am hoping I can get it onto my April TBR because I still really, really want to read this. Like, desperately want to read this. So I am going to try to roll this over in April, but not in March. So that's that. Now let's go ahead and talk about my top three books. Um, so I'm not going to hold them up because they're all buried now, but number one top spot. So this doesn't necessarily equal star rating and like my enjoyment. Star ratings are more the enjoyment I got out of the book and the writing and everything. The top three are the ones that kind of stuck with me the most. So first we have Daisy Jones and the Six. One, it had a unique format which I really enjoy because I don't typically read different formats like that. Two, it made me want more. Like I wanted the music, I wanted like I wanted more. It felt like it could be a nonfiction. Like it really felt like it could be the true story of this band. Um, and I think it really captured the essence of the a 70s rock band. So love that. That was number one spot. Number two was Pestilence by Laura Thalassa. One, Four Horsemen, like, I love anything kind of down that rabbit hole. Um, I love, like, Four Horsemen apocalypse-type things, which is funny because I don't really like, like, dystopian novels. Like, they're not my go-to, but Four Horsemen, like, I just, I love it. So there's that. 
it kind of makes you question your morals, you know, because ideally, like, you shouldn't be rooting for pestilence, like, um, but you, you're kind of questioning your morals along with Sarah, like, you know, like, well, maybe he's not so bad. <laughs> so the atmosphere of the book was fantastic. And the slow burn between Sarah and Pestilence, which I thought that was done really, really well. Um, because she's having to kind of go through this journey of acceptance and such too. So I thought that was done really, really well. Um, the third spot was The Desert and the Drum by Mubarak Old Beirut, translated by Rachel McGill. Just the overall premise of it, um, you know, her, the sacred drum, taking the sacred drum and going on this journey to try to find what was stolen from her. I really like that. You got a look kind of at a different culture and a different writing style, which I thought I, I enjoy that a lot. I love the setting. Like, I love... Which is funny, I live in the desert and I don't love it, but, like, the desert setting and such, I just, I really enjoyed that. And then it really had me pulling for that main character, like I said, the, the writing was good enough that I was really, really pulling for her. Even though I'm, like, looking at it logically, it's like, there's no way, like, if you look at it logically, um, but... There was just something about the character and her journey and why she was doing what she did that really pulled you. So that's why I ended up as part of the top three. So stats-wise, audio hours was 12 hours, 6 minutes. Page count was 6,546, plus the 13 pages of the choice we did get read. Um, I forgot to add that in because I completely forgot about the choice, so we have that. I read 19 fiction, 2 nonfiction. 20 of those were physical, one was audio, and one of them was a reread, which was Daughter of No Worlds, of course. As far as genres, now, these are overlapping, so some of the books fit multiple genres. So there was 8 that fit romance, 8 that fit fantasy, 6 young adult, 3 science fiction, 3 literary, 2 classics, 2 contemporary, 1 dystopian, 1 nature, 1 LGBTQIA+, 1 thriller, 1 poetry, 1 mystery, I did two, his it had, it separated the nonfiction, so West from Home under history, and then Rainwater under historical, so I just combined that, so two history slash historical reads, and then one biography. My top moods were emotional, adventurous, and dark, so I think last month, too, it was like emotional, let's see, yeah, my top moods last month were adventurous, emotional, and mysterious, so, um, kind of swapped emotional and adventurous for this month, and then added in dark, too, so, and then I hauled 29 books this month, so that is it, I know, again, this video is longer, I had a comment on last month's wrap-up, um, that I should try to do two parts, I personally like longer videos, uh, because I did consider that as well, but I like longer videos when I, I like just putting them on so I could get other things done, and if I have to stop for whatever reason, I just stop it and then I come back to it later. I just go to my history and come back to it later and pick up where I left off. So I know it's not everybody's cup of tea, but it's my preference. And yeah, if you're still around, thank you. Let me know if you read any of these books, if you're interested in any of these books, and what your favorite read from February was. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys here. Happy reading, everyone. Bye.